Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll call to order. Uh, so, first thing I will do is ask for a roll call. Mr. Clerk, do we have a quorum? Uh, yes, we do. Councillors, please sign in. So, uh, Councillor Bohm has sent his uh, regrets for this evening. We have just about everybody else here. So, uh, we'll move to a Committee of the Whole closed meeting. The council resolve itself into Committee of the Whole closed meeting to consider the following items. A proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, Mile Square. Advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, and litigation that is litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, Cataraqui West, open space lands. Advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, casino gaming facility. Uh, and D, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, 2014 uh, CAO performance review, uh, and 2015 goals. And that was moved by Councilor Turner and seconded by Councilor Osanek. Please vote. And that carries. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, were just meeting as a committee of the whole closed meeting and discussed uh, a few different items, uh, pending uh, acquisition or disposition of land, Miles Square, um, uh, potential or solicitor client privilege, uh, litigation, potential litigation with respect to Cataracte West open space lands, uh, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, the casino gaming facility, uh, and then also matters related to the 2014 CAO performance review. So with that, I will ask for a motion to rise from a uh, closed meeting without reporting. Moved by Councillor Holland, seconded by Councillor Candon, that council rise from Committee of the Whole, closed meeting without reporting. Please vote. And that carries. Next, I'll ask for an approval of the adds. We have um, a request to add a delegation. Uh, we have a notice of motion and then uh, communication. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Councillor Schell. Please vote. And that carries. Are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Saw so, uh, Councillor Schell first. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I, Liz Shell of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of closed meeting part C, casino gaming facility, as my son works for the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation. Thank you. Councillor George. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. I, Kevin George of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of Report number 15-243 of the closed meeting session uh, as the applicant was, has retained my company for services in the immediate area. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other uh, pecuniary interests, uh, we'll move on. We do have one presentation this evening. Uh, Helen Humphreys, City of Kingston Poet Laureate, will present a poem in recognition of National Poetry Month. Ms. Humphreys. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read a poem by Joanne Page, who was a much-loved Kingston poet who died on February 20th of this year. And the poem I'm going to read is called Davis Strait, and it's from her book called Watermarks. Here we go up the coast in company with floating archipelagos, borealis azure, Parliaments of ice boating northwest to Canada. Lordly tourists, motherlands with hitchhikers, gulls, seals, the occasional white bear, the world in a guise I had imagined but did not know to be a question. If this is not your Eden, what is? 
I would require seasons five or six and a book of words to use with one set of meanings. I would need pure color in great sweeps, as well as inside and underneath where you don't expect it. Belief would take the form of tolerant irony, say lapsed Quaker, lack temple priests and rules but one, love when you can. My Eden would run on marsh gas, on wind, be governed by those who mean to save the world with zeal, except for Texans, or come to think of it, feminist collectives. In civic spaces made of dance and song and public art of the impermanent kind that announces itself by departing. My Eden would have some hot, dark nights, insects, frogs, roosting orange birds, ripe fruit, free lunch, stable money and halls of harvest, fair play, invention, clean wells, children in bed linen by open windows, and snow, yes, now and then, on the domed roofs of the capital, at the edge of the night, where the white bear swims on his back through the bright sea of his hunt. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Humphreys. We do uh, not have any briefings, Tonight, are there any petitions from Council? Councillor McLaren. Thank you. To our councillors and mayor, we are petitioning you to stop cutting the trees in our park. Over the years, there has been a consistent flow of either City of Kingston personnel or contractors in our park. Lately, there have been people surveying the park to ascertain which trees to be removed because of the ash beetle. We take no issue against the due diligence of protecting other trees. However, with the current program that exists, there won't be any trees to worry about. In 2007, some members of the committee, community had a meeting with the supervisor in charge of the park. The meeting was arranged in response to the lack of planting. In this meeting, we were told that there were several hundred parks in the portfolio and that there were too many trees in the park anyways. However, it was agreed that some trees would be planted. There were four trees planted. Since then, there have been many more than four removed. Going forward, we would like a good number of trees, such as balsam pine, oak, and maple planted in the park and area. We do not want the park to look like Smithfield Park, which is now essentially a field. We, the people who enjoy this park and its shade and wildlife, would like to pass on Balsam Grove Park to the next generation. This park is, opposed, is supposed to be old growth. Let it get old. Thank you. And this has been signed by 46 residents of the area. Thank you. Thank you. There is also a uh, petition in the agenda. It says a petition bearing eight signatures was presented at the Planning Committee on April 2nd, 2015 and received in the City Clerk's Department on April 9th, 2015 and reads as follows. We, the undersigned, oppose the amendment to propose zoning bylaw application uh, regarding Mackenzie Crescent in Kingston, Ontario. Councillor Allen. I also have a petition. Uh, it's, uh, it bears approximately 47 signatures, uh, and it's concerning the, the uh, proposed expansion of the Elgenberg Quarry. Uh, it says, we, the undersigned concerned citizens, urge Kingston City Council to not approve the application for a new license, not approve the official plan amendment, not approve the zoning bylaw amendment, uh, form an injunction to stop the quarry operation from its continued expansion and below the water table extraction. Due to these concerns, groundwater structures in the area, wells drawing from the aquifer are going to be impacted. The natural environment due to the loss of significant woodlot, habitat, wetland resources, air pollution from processing dust and noise from the processing op operations damage to nearby homes. The blasting can cause failure in the pipeline that goes through the quarry, uh, possibly affecting the water source for many area wells, uh, depreciation of property values for homes in the area, noise and threats to safety because of excessive truck traffic on Unity Road, Cordukes Road, and at Sydenham Road and Unity Road. Concern of sediments from pumping operations being deposited on eight adjacent lands. So I submit this. Thank you. So seeing no other petitions, uh, just looping back here, uh, we do have a couple of delegations on the agenda. The first is Mr. Kelly Pender, CAO, County of Frontenac, who will appear before council to speak to clause two, report number 38 received from the chief administrative officer 
2015 budget update agency and board request. And just a note to uh, delegations that you have uh, five minutes. Mr. Pender. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, members of City Council, on behalf of Warden Dennis Doyle and members of the County Frontenac Council, thank you for the opportunity to provide you this overview. Is there a presentation? For, is it on your screen or, sorry? So if we can just... It's on my screen. So I, this doesn't come from your five minutes. We'll just uh, <laughs> fix our technical difficulties here. I can do it without your worship. Please just bear with us. The, uh, we need to reboot our technology, but uh, Mr. Pender has indicated that he is able to uh, continue without the uh, presentation. So, Mr. Pender, you have the Thank floor. Thank you, Your Worship. With me this evening are Director of Corporate Services and Treasurer, Marion Van Bernessen, and our Chief of Paramedic Services, Paul Charbonneau, if there are any uh, technical questions. The County of Frontenac, as you know, is uh, about 40,000 square feet, or square kilometers, stretching from the north boundary of the city of Kingston to Ompa and Plevin in the north and Bon Echo Park, and of course to the south, Howe Island and Wolf Island. There are three strategic themes for the County of Frontenac for this term of council. Seniors issues, uh, housing and transportation in particular, keeping seniors within our community. The future of waste management and economic development, improving the economic condition for our citizens. All three interact with the City of Kingston. The County approved our budget on February the 18th. The budget target set for council for this term is inflation plus 0.65 percent to uh, decrease their infrastructure gap. We're currently working on long-range financial plans and five-year business plans for our, each one of our sectors um, to minimize surprises to our council and to minimize surprises to this council. The County of Frontenac provides long-term care at Fairmount and paramedic services to the City of Kingston. The City of Kingston in return provides social services POA court and housing to the county of Frontenac. So it's a reciprocal arrangement and your staff provided an update to county council uh, back in February. Each department will be preparing a five-year business plan including paramedics and long-term care which we'll review carefully with your staff. In 2015 we'll be doing an urban station review looking at response times within the city of Kingston and we'll be working in particular with your fire department uh, looking at potential locations for uh, co-location uh, with the fire station. We're completing a test of smaller platform ambulances. You'll be seeing those uh, running around your street starting this summer. Uh, we've moved from uh, a large platform of 94 inches. Um, the new fleet is 84 inches or, and we're moving to an 83 inch platform uh, called the ICON. The smaller platform, of course, will be more fuel efficient and will also be more nimble in urban streets. Continuing with our 2015 initiatives, we're com continuing with the uh, community paramedicine initiative um, and we'll be reporting to the province on the role that uh, para paramedics will be playing in, the, uh, in providing health care to your citizens. We're also working on a paramedic uh, wellness program related to post-traumatic stress syndrome. Of particular interest to this council, we're also, uh, we'll be testing this summer and fall new power stretchers. The power stretchers uh, um, <clears throat> will assist with the lifting. Each stretcher weighs about 100 pounds, each of the existing weighs about 100 pounds. In an urban station, they'll be lifted between four and eight times, um, both in and out of the ambulance. The power stretcher will reduce musculoskeletal injuries and our goal is to, is to see reduced costs in terms of our WSIB as a result. We've agreed to a six year phase in for those, essentially the amortization period of the new stretchers should, should the purchase decision be made this fall. This year we'll also be completing union negotiations with the long-term care workers at Fairmount, which is a, 
um, a QP local and our paramedics, which is an OPSU local. We just received our arbitration award for 2013-14, yes, I know we're a couple of years behind, with our paramedics, or pardon me, with our long-term care workers. And those costs are reflected in the 2015 budget presented to this council. We continue to see an increase in our case mix index, which is how the nursing envelope of long-term care is provided. Um, and I think it's fairly typical across Ontario that the acuity of patients in long-term care is getting higher as we continue to keep people in their own homes. Unfortunately, the provincial funding uh, based on the CMI is not keeping pace. We'll also be completing condition assessments for all of our capital assets, including uh, ambulance stations in the city of Kingston and our long-term care facility at Glen Burnie. The community use of the Fairmont Auto Auditorium, which this council contributed to in 2013, was completed in, in 2014 and opened. It was on time and on budget, and we can continue to see um, tremendous interest in the community to use that facility. We've spoken with your city manager with respect to the Rural Urban Liaison Advisory Committee and making that a, a more a forward-looking committee where we will discuss long-range plans as well as uh, immediate needs for, for both communities, as well as cooperation on waste management issues. The budget numbers are in your package. Uh, there's a couple of budget pressures that we need to bring to your attention, in particular under long-term care benefits, continue, benefits and payroll costs continue to outstrip inflation as do utility costs. Again, those aren't reflected in the grants we receive from the province. Um, the, as I mentioned, the arbitration award at Fairmount is now reflected in the budget and those numbers are there for you. And under um, paramedic services, because the funding formula for that is based upon weighted assessment, there's been some shift in costs from the city to the, to the county as weighted assessment has increased in the county. So that's good news. And 30, there's also 30, 30 seconds. Uh, also good news, as, as I'm sure that you've heard from your public works and transit people with respect to fuel costs, which are reflected in your budget. And with that, if there are any questions for Marion and Paul and myself, we'd please answer them. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from council? Councillor Hutchison. Just on the issue of the platform that you've changed, you've narrowed the platform of the ambulances. Correct. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, uh, the description of the interior to the chief, but it's more of a modular system, which makes it more flexible in many regards. But the, we're comf comfortable that the interior space will be sufficient. Through you, Your Worship, uh, we're actually uh, going to be the Canadian ses uh, test site for a brand new safety concept ambulance. Uh, one has been built in the United States, one in uh, Great Britain, and we're the test site for the Canadian model. In fact, it's going down by some 10 inches on the outside dimensions. We're only losing two inches on the inside, but we're taking all the cupboards out so there's even more space for the patient. This is because of the issue of, uh, of our citizens uh, are becoming more, uh, more and more. We see bariatric patients. Uh, that's one of the reasons for the uh, power stretchers is uh, they'll be loading in such a system that they're center mounted. So we're quite, and, and this, the idea behind the safety ambulance is the patient can be accessed by the paramedic at any time while still strapped in the back of the ambulance in their safety seats. Thank you, Your Worship. Seven, uh, approval to amend the scope of the business plan for the Tet Center for Creativity and Learning to allow for the inclusion of a cafe style food service as part of the facility operations. Is it working now? Or? Um, how's, how's the reboot coming? No. That's so good. Okay. That's fine. I'll go. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to first thank the mayor and council for the opportunity to speak this evening.
My name is Paddy Petkovic, and I'm the co-chair of the Board of Directors of the Tet Centre for Creativity and Learning. I'm here today to speak on behalf of the tenants of the Tet Centre and to thank the City staff for their overwhelming support on the Tet Centre project. You've just been amazing to work with. The many hours we have spent together working, all that, working through all that was needed to be done to open this wonderful facility. The grand opening earlier this year has shown us some of the enormous potential of this centre. We've been working on this project for 10 years now, and it's just incredible to think about where we were, how far we've come, and where we want to go. Part of this vision, part, and our excitement over the vision of where we want to go, part of this vision is to open a cafe on the water level of the south side of the facility. What an amazing site for this cafe, with an outdoor patio overlooking Lake Ontario, helping to revitalize the Kingston waterfront. We are here to encourage Council to vote in favour of the motion to allow the scope of the TEP project to increase to include the cafe. I would just like the supporters of this project in the audience to stand. Thank you. The Waterfront Master Plan recognizes the importance of the renewal of public waterfront spaces, as well as the improvement of public access to the waterfront. How perfectly the cafe would fit with this master plan. Artscape is an arts organization in Toronto and served as the primary consultants for this project. During development of their Witchwood Barns in Toronto, they did not realize the importance of a cafe until the project was completed without including, including a cafe component. Prue Robbie, the vice president of Artscape, stated that they would not construct a creative cluster again without a cafe. They found it was integral to the success of the project. Having the cafe would enhance the operations of all of the Tet Tenant organizations and provide an opportunity to generate much needed revenue on a more regular basis. The cafe would give the center a greater potential to establish itself as a cultural hub and community center. It would provide a space where artists in, in the center could come, sit, have a coffee in an informal setting and exchange ideas. A place where parents bringing their children to activities could meet and relax. The cafe would increase possible synergies between Queens and the community by attracting Queens and Kingston residents into our facility. Staff and students of the Isabel Bader Center for the For Performing Arts are looking forward to having a source for food close by. It would draw the surrounding neighborhood and greater Kingston community into the building and give everyone another reason to visit their Tet Center. It would be a more desirable place for the tour trolley to stop, knowing there would be a place for tourists to have refreshments. We have had comments from local hotels stating that if they send tourists over to the Tet Center, it would be wonderful to have a cafe to complete the positive experience of the center. In closing, we believe the cafe is an important catalyst to help tie the tenants, the artists, the Isabel, Queen's University, the neighborhood, the community, and tourists to the city of Kingston together to ensure our vision for the Tet Center is achieved. To move forward and complete this vision, we encourage Council to vote in favor of increasing the scope of the Tet project to include the cafe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from Council? Okay. Seeing none, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay, so we have no motions of congratulations uh, this evening. We have no deferred motions. So I will ask for report number 37 from the CAO consent. So it's moved by Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Allen, that report number 37 from the CAO Chief Administrative Officer consent be received and adopted. So there are three clauses. Would anyone like them separated? Councillor Sanek. Item B, please. Item B. Okay, seeing no other separations, 
We will vote first on item A and C. A is Kingston Transit License Agreement with Cataractway Holdings Incorporated for the Cataractway Center. Item C is approval to amend the scope of the business plan for the TET Center for creativity and learning to allow for the inclusion of a cafe style food service as part of the facility operations. We will call the vote. Still one person to vote. And that carries unanimously. Item B is award of contract, pet registration and identification service for the city of Kingston. Councillor Osanek. Your Worship, I'm really happy um, for this award of contract to DocuPet. Um, two new important features will now be available to the community and they were really important for the um, responsible pet ownership working group to see that they got implemented. One of them is that um, our website will now have a lost and found section for lost and found pets. And uh, the other that's really important is that there's going to be a rollout of a rewards program. So that will provide incentive for people to get their pets registered because they'll be able to get a discount to offset the cost of the pet tags through um, our local retailers. So I'm really looking forward to um, moving the resp responsible pet ownership program through and this will really help the program. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other questions or comments, we'll call the vote. And that carries. Report number 38 from the CAO. Recommend. So it's moved by Councillor Turner, cited by Councillor Holland. Report number 38 from the Chief Administrative Officer. Recommend be received and adopted clause by clause. So the first clause is the fourth quarter operating budget report for 2014. We'll call the vote. And that carries. Number two is 2015 budget update agency and board requests. Call the vote. And that carries. Item three is service level agreement with the Kingston Arts Council and council participation in the 2015 City of Kingston Arts Fund. So there is a recommendation and uh, we're looking for a couple of volunteers to be appointed to participate in the uh, two jury review committee meetings scheduled for May the 23rd and May the 24th. Can I have uh, Councillor Neal? If I could just ask a quick question. It seems to me in the past, and I may be wrong, but we had a different roster of volunteers for the projects, grants, and a different one for the operating. Is that the intent, or are you looking for the same, the same counselor? Mr. Wiginton? Through your worship, as Councillor Neal has stated, it is that setup. So there's one jury for the project grants and a second jury for the operating grants. Uh, the way it's been done in the past is we've asked for two councillors to volunteer for each of the two days so that there's a alternate in case for some reason the person who's volunteered isn't able to make it. Thank you very much. Also volunteer. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Councillor Stroud, is, are you volunteering as well? I'd like to volunteer for, but I'm only available for the May 23rd date. Is it, is, is, are both, uh, reviews on both dates. Mr. Wiginton, can you clarify just what their time commitment is? The, the time commitment would be one full day for each of the two councillors. So the operating grants will be dealt with on May 23rd and the project grants would be dealt with on May 24th. So I get, I'd like to volunteer for their operating grant portion. Okay, so Okay, so Councillor Neal, have you volunteered for both? I can volunteer for either. 
and be the alternate on the other one. I think that was the intent. Okay. So. So, so that would mean that I would still need two more volunteers for, for example, the project review committee. So can I have a couple of other, couple of other volunteers for that? Councillor Allen, volunteer. I would like to volunteer, Your Worship. Uh, I, I think Thank supporting you. the arts and arts organizations is a noble cause. Very good. Thank you. So we have three of four volunteers. Is there a fourth? Councillor Neal, would you consider volunteering for both committees? Yes, I can. Okay. Does Very this good. mean I don't have a life? I don't know. <laughs> Very good. So, Mr. Clerk, do we have that? We have noted who the we volunteers do. are. Okay, thank you. So, with that, we will call the vote. And that carries. Report number 39 from the Planning Committee. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. It's my pleasure to present report number 39 from the Planning Committee and ask that it be received and adopted. Thank you. Thanks. So it's moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor George, that report number 39 from the Planning Committee be received and adopted. So there are five items in the report. Would anyone like any of them separated? Councillor McLaren? would like number one separated. So we will call the vote first on items two through five. So item two is a zoning bylaw amendment 771 Montreal Street. Item three is a zoning bylaw amendment 2192 to 2196 Swanfield Street. Item four is a zoning bylaw amendment 705 King Street West. And item five is administrative amendment to the official plan. So we will call the vote. And that carries item number one is the uh, amenity area review study final report. Councilor McLaren. Thank you. Uh, based on this particular wording, I would uh, like to make an amendment that the word endorse be replaced by receive. It's been moved by myself and seconded by uh, Councillor Neal. The rationale is that we can't agree with, sorry? Okay, so just, so we have a motion to amend that's been put forward. So we're just replacing the one word, so I, I won't require that in writing. So the motion to amend is now on the floor. So yes, Council McLaren, you can speak to it. Okay. And the rationale is that we can't agree to it all. There's a little bit of faulty logic there, but the end results may be uh, very good. I understand that there's going to be continued monitoring of it, and the difference between endorse and receive allows a greater amount of flexibility in the actual conclusions that are done as this is passed on to the uh, OP review. Thank you. Thank you. So there is a motion to amend on the floor. Uh, question for staff. Is there any potential implication to changing the word endorse to receive? Mr. Hurdle. So we would definitely like to have some direction from council in terms of what council would like to see. Um, if it's just received, that means council may agree with some or not agree with any of it. It doesn't really give us any kind of direction. So if that's um, what we are getting, which is a lack of, from our perspective, a bit of a lack of direction, then what we would do is we would just implement what's in the study and we would move forward with the implementation of that information in any of our official plan update and uh, zoning bylaw. So, so if I understand your answer correctly, it's that if we receive the report, then it would be implemented in the same way as if we endorse the report? That's correct. We will proceed to implement it because that's the only information right now that we have to move forward uh, unless we were to start this exercise all over again. 
um, which is not part of our plans. Okay, thank you. So this is on the motion to amend, Councillor Neal. Yes, thank you. This came up um, with uh, a delegation when we were speaking at the public meeting uh, about uh, our industrial lands policy. And it was pointed out that in the past we've received such reports and the sense was that that gave some flexibility to either council or staff to, uh, to not necessarily follow totally the recommendations in that consultant's report. And that passed at uh, planning, um, that amendment passed at planning and the rationale uh, just like we heard here is that they can very well still uh, vet, go over the consultant's report and add those issues that they wish to, to incorporate into the official plan or the comprehensive zoning bylaw. So, so I think that this just kind of returns us to that space where we're receiving consultants' reports, passing them on to staff for their consideration. And so um, I, I hope using that the same rationale that we used at planning, we're able to pass this very minor amendment. Say your hunt. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to uh, also advice council that at planning, uh, the commissioner also indicated, and for the record in the minutes, that staff would proceed to implement in accordance with the word that we intend the word endorsed to mean, so that there is no confusion. Did council really, um, it really, did they really, re did they really agree with this or did they just receive it or whatever? And we've, we've changed that from a few years ago to use the word endorse, not approve for the reason to strengthen the direction to staff around the use of these reports for the purposes of technical input into policy. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bohm is not here. Councillor Neal, will you take the chair? I certainly will, and I recognize you. Thank you. Uh, while I understand that there isn't any practical effect to this amendment in this particular case, I'm uncomfortable with going down a road where we start to be increasingly vague without spelling out exactly what it is that we agree with and what it is that we don't. I think that if there's something that's in this report that we don't agree with, then we should address it and we should debate it and we should get information and then make a decision. So uh, for that reason, I won't support uh, the motion to amend. Thank you. Thank you. And I return the chair. And Councillor Shell, I believe, is next. Councillor Shell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Patterson. It brings, that brings up an interesting point that uh, when we received uh, or received the report, um, one of the discussions that we had internally was that we can't change a consultant's report. And that is part of what led to this idea of receiving the report. None of us were 100% on every single thing that the consultant's report said. We also presume that it's not, that it's the same way with staff, that 100% isn't totally agreed with by staff, that they are going to pick and choose. Um, so we felt receive was a more appropriate word than starting to dive into the consultant's report. We could have had probably 10 motions to change it. So at least this way, we're, we felt we were giving staff the flexibility we felt they needed, and we felt comfortable that we weren't digging into something that probably would have taken hours. So this way, we've all allowed for some flexibility, we felt, by saying receive, instead of endorse, which really is quite a powerful word. Thank you. Thank you. So we will call the question on the motion to amend. And that carries by a vote of seven to five on the motion as amended. Seeing no other comments or questions, we will call the vote.
and that carries. Report number 40 from the Municipal Heritage Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce this report, and I ask that Council receive and adopt it. It's moved by Councillor Stroud, seconded by Councillor Stroud, that report number 40 from the Municipal Heritage Committee be received and adopted. So there are 11 clauses. If nobody would like any of them separated, we'll vote on them as a whole. So we'll call the vote. And that carries. Report number 41 from the Administrative Policies Committee. Thank you again, Your Worship. Uh, it, this is the report of the Administrative Policies Committee, and I would ask that it be received and adopted by Council. So it's moved by Councillor Stroud, second by Councillor Candon. The report number 41 from the Chief, from the Administrative Policies Committee be received and adopted. So there's just the one item, tax write-offs pursuant to the Municipal Act 2001. Seeing no questions or comments, we will call the vote. And that carries. Report number 42 from the Municipal Accessibility Advisory Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. It is my pleasure to present report number 42 from the Municipal Accessibility Advisory Committee, and I ask that it be received and adopted. So it's moved by Councillor Holland, second by Councillor Candon. The report number 42 from the Municipal Accessibility Advisory Committee be received and adopted. So again, just a one clause, the uh, MAC working groups. So we will call the vote. And that carries. There's nothing from the Committee of the Whole. There are a number of information reports. Uh, number one, tender and contract awards subject to the established criteria for delegation of authority for the month of February 2015. Number two, waste recycling strategy update. Number three, Heritage Resource Center pilot project. Number four, Q1 report on agreements executed under delegated approval and signing authority. Okay, seeing no questions, we will move on to Ms. Laney's business. Motion number one, that the resignation of Ms. Ann helsby Scooten from the Appeals Committee be received with regret. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Schell, seconded by Councillor Turner. Please vote. And that carries. Number two, that the resignation of Mr. Harry P. Clayhorn from the CRCA Lemoyne Point Advisory Committee be received with regret. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Osanic. Please vote. And that carries. Number three, that as requested by the Rotary Club, the Canadian Dental Association, and the Kahn Foundation for Children, Council proclaimed April 2015 as Oral Health Month in the City of Kingston. Moved by Councillor Allen, seconded by Councillor Neal. Please vote. And 
And that carries. On to new motions. Number one, moved by Councillor Osanek, seconded by Councillor Turner. Whereas residents in the city of Kingston have expressed concerns regarding the transportation of crude oil and rail cars traveling on the CN major rail line through the city due to the recent derailments of trains carrying crude oil in 2015 in Canada and the US that sparked major fires, polluted waterways, and forced evacuations in some towns. And whereas the Transportation Safety Board in Canada has announced concerns about Transport Canada's planned implementation timeline of a 10-year phased-in retrofit replacement schedule by 2025 for the existing tank cars on the rail lines today, and whereas the U.S. Transportation, Department of Transportation is proposing enhanced tank car standards in half that time, therefore be it resolved that the Kingston City Council respectfully requests that Transport Canada roll out the new tank car standards in Canada as concurrent to the timeline of the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, as possible, and that Council requests that Transport Canada and the rail industry implement significant safety enhancements that address train speed and rail track infrastructure inspections and maintenance to help avoid future derailments, and that this resolution be circulated to Kingston and the Islands MP Ted Shu, Federal Minister of Transportation Lisa Raitt, Liberal Transport Critic David McGinty, NDP Transport Critic Hoang Mai, Kingston and Islands MPP Sophie Kuala, the municipalities along the CNCP Railway Corridor in Eastern Ontario, Cornwall, Township of South Stormont, Rockville, Front of Young, Gananoque, Loyals Township, Greater Napanee, Belleville, Quinty West, Brighton, Coburg, Port Hope, Oshawa, Pickering, Ajax, and Toronto, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Senior Advisor Craig Reed. Councillor Osanek. Thank you, for Your Worship. This motion came about when our MP Ted Shu um, hosted a rail safety panel discussion about two months ago due to the number of derailments that happened throughout North America um, over this past winter um, involving tank cars carrying crude oil. So both Councillor Turner and I, we attended that. There was about 50 residents in attendance and there were um, retired export, or experts from Transport Canada on the panel. And what they really stressed is that residents have to get involved and they have to get their city council involved to you know, try to get Transport Canada to improve the safety on the railways. Um, our fire chief also attended, as did our director of engineering. So this motion has been shown to both um, our MP, Ted Shu, as well as um, our fire chief and the director of engineering to get their input. It's been sent to the Association of Municipalities, to their analyst. Um, he approved it. He thought it was a good idea, you know, and, and because we had all those numerous cities mentioned in the motion, um, you know, that they would get a copy of it. And if they supported it, you know, they could maybe gain some traction here and Transport Canada would start to listen to all the concerns. Um, Transport Canada, they have a plan to phase out the Class 111 tank cars as well as the current CPC 1232s over the next 10 years. Um, in the United States, they want to phase out those tank cars within the next five years. So there's like a five-year disconnect there. And what happened over the winter is that the um, Transportation Safety Board, they did raise some alarm bells that they thought 10 years implementation plan was sort of um, too long. It was just too slow. The brand new tank cars they want to start implementing are called the TC-117s. They're more crash resistant. They have thicker shells and they have electronically controlled brakes that stop cars all at the same time instead of sequentially. So that makes them able to stop faster and uh, be more safer. So that's what the motion's calling for is to see if we can you know, increase this 10 year implementation time phase as well as calls for more track inspections and maintenance of the tracks. And I hope that council votes in favor to approve this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing nobody else that wants to speak. Oh, Councillor Turner. Um, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to add my comment to this motion. I think it's an important motion since the train tracks do go through Kingston and it's an urban area. Um, and I wanted to also mention that Kingston is not acting alone in, in this issue. Um, while we were sending out our motion to various offices around Kingston, the City of Toronto voted on March 31st to send a letter to the Federal Transport Minister asking for Transport Canada to take further measures to bolster rail safety through Toronto. They wanted Transport Canada to explore alternative routes for dangerous goods and also like us to speed up the removal of older tank cars. 
So Toronto's been involved in this as well. And I think it's important in our motion that they will receive a copy of our resolution if we pass it on and that they will see that our city shares in the same concerns that they have as well in Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. So we will call the vote. And that carries. Notice of motion, moved by Councillor Holland, seconded by Councillor Osanek. Whereas Fort Henry Investments Limited has applied for a zoning bylaw amendment for the purpose of developing a business park and commercial development at 1122 John Counter Boulevard, and whereas concern was expressed by residents of the public meeting conducted December 4, 2014, in respect to numerous site plan issues such as noise, fencing, separation distance, garbage placement, lighting, and landscaping, and whereas the delegation of authority bylaw allows for Council to bump up site plan control applications to planning committee and whereas this procedure will provide transparency and allow the details to be debated in a public forum, therefore be it resolved that the site plan control application for 1122 John Counter Boulevard by Fort Henry Investments Limited be bumped up to the planning committee. Are there any other notices of motion? Okay. Minutes. Moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor George, that the minutes of the City Council meeting number 2015-11 held Tuesday, March 24th, 2015, and Wednesday, March 25th, 2015, and 2015-12 held Tuesday, April 7th, 2015, be confirmed. Please vote. And that carries. We have some tabling of documents. We have a number of communications. Is there any other business? Mr. Clerk, I'll ask for bylaws. So it's moved by Councilor Turner, second by Councilor Allen, that, that bylaws one through seven and nine be given their first and second reading. Please vote. That carries. So it's moved by Councilor Turner, second by Councilor Candon, that bylaws four through nine be given their second, third reading. Please vote. That carries. And at 8.33, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Hutchison. Please vote. Still one person to vote. You're keeping us all here, whoever you are. Well, one person still to vote. That carries. Thanks very much.